One of the really lovely things about working as an engineer in Formula One is that every season casts up its own challenges. Last year, in 2019, the challenge was how to cope with the breathtaking headlong rush of figuring out how to reinvent the front corner aerodynamics after a very late change in the regulations. In 2021, a completely different challenge awaits us where a completely new set of regulations is going to arrive and where we have the terrifying and yet exhilarating thrill of picking our way through virgin design space, trying to avoid the man traps and seeking the treasure that's hidden within those regulations. And this year, 2020, a completely different set of challenges all over again. The challenge being, in a year where the regulations are completely stable and where the tires haven't changed one little bit, how do we take last year's best car, the 2019 Mercedes car, how do we take that car and produce something properly competitive when the regulations haven't changed? The temptation for us was just to keep polishing that one. After all, it finished the season really strongly and it was developing very fast all the way through the year. So there was still lots of opportunity to make that one quicker. That conservative approach was very, very tempting. But in the end, we decided that wouldn't be enough. We were feeling the breath of our opponents on our shoulders. We know their hunger, and we know that if we don't do something impressive with this car, they'll eat us up and leave us behind. So we decided that we would make a car that was aggressive. Despite the fact that there is no change in the regulations, we would take every part of the car and see if we could challenge ourselves to make it better. And I can't do justice in a short piece like this to all the hundreds of things we've done, but I'll tell you some stuff about the front, the middle, and the back of this car, the areas in which we've invested to try to give us an opportunity both to hit the ground in Melbourne with a car that is a big step forward and also to have a platform that will keep developing strongly through the year. So at the front, first of all, at the front we've changed a lot of the structure of the front corners. We've made it much harder for ourselves structurally, much harder to take the forces, but we've rearranged the detail inside the wheels and in the way the suspension goes into those wheels so that we have more aerodynamic opportunity in the front end. A difficult project, but one which has given us good aerodynamic gains. In the middle of the car, a couple of things. First of all, something which is pretty familiar to the sport because actually many teams have already adopted this. And that is we've moved the side impact structure from its upper position that we've had for the last three seasons, we've moved it to a lower position here. Something which many teams have already done and something which we've been watching on from afar, but this year we decided to make the structural investment to pull that into our car and to bank the aerodynamic gain that comes with it. Also in the middle of the car, huge, huge effort gone in by HPP to put more performance into the PU. They've managed to have a really good winter, finding lots and lots of fresh horses from this power unit. Many years into a regulation with fixed fuel flow, this year they've managed to find a really impressive upgrade in the power. Not just more horsepower, they've also, for the third year straight, bent over backwards to give us a power unit that gives opportunities on the chassis side to develop better aerodynamics. Because they put a lot of work in to make it so that this power unit could operate at elevated temperatures compared to the previous year. Being able to run hotter means that for the same everything else, we can make smaller radiators in the car and keep the car cool. One of the reasons why this car is even slimmer than the ones that we've seen in previous seasons. Last year's chassis would have stuck way out the side of this bodywork, but this year's one narrower still as a result of the investments that HPP made on our behalf in their power unit. And then finally at the back of the car, probably in these camera shots, because we're a little bit coy about it, you're not gonna see all the detail. But I can tell you that the rear suspension on this car is extremely adventurous. We've put into the back, specifically on the lower rear wishbone, we've put a new geometry in there, a new geometry that gives us more aerodynamic opportunity, allows us to get more downforce on the car. Taken together, all these investments that I've been describing 
none of them are easy, and nearly all of them are a structural compromise where we've had to put weight on the front, in the middle, and at the back of the car in order to realize these gains. And that weight has had to be paid for by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small innovations by other designers who have managed to save the weight that's allowed us to buy each of these investments. But these investments have given us a good winter. We've got a car here that is streaks ahead of that one in terms of downforce. We've got a car here whose development slope has kicked up, is steeper than the one that we finished last year's with in that very, very good car from 2019. And we've got a car here that we hope will be fertile ground to develop strongly all the way through the 2020 season.